Greetings and welcome back to Factorio FFFs with Catherine of Sky. That's me. Um, yeah, and I have gotten myself a new background. You can see I'm reporting here from Fulgora. And um, yeah, I'm excited about the new stuff. Uh, we have Friday Facts number 405, Whole Belt Reader and New Logistics GUI. Yes, we have many things to talk about today. So, um, if you've ever done a sushi belt, uh, a lot of times you have to end up with this kind of mess, uh, connecting every belt segment together in order to read the whole of the belt to make sure that you don't put uh, too many of one type of item on the belt. Um, so the devs wanted to solve this problem uh, because these, uh, these sushi belts were ugly inefficient, tedious, and it obscures the items on the belts. As you can see, you can barely see what's underneath them, and it doesn't work for underground belts. So um, they wanted to fix this problem, and I think they've come up with a really cool solution. Um, they decided to make it work nicer. So Boss Kid added a new mode where you can choose, uh, when selecting the read belt contents mode, hold all belts. And they were very clever about the way they did this. They put these like borders around them. I love it. I think it's so cool. It, it's so subtle, but yet it really conveys, ah, yes, this whole belt is being monitored. Um, this is going to be amazing for things like uh, ammo delivery systems and stuff like that. It's going to make it a lot easier for saying like, ah, yes, this ammo turret way down the line needs, you know, X amount of ammo and uh, you can see if you've sent any or not and, it, and it's on the belt and you can read it and you don't have to connect all the things or do complicated uh, circuits and stuff like this. I think it's a really good solution. Um, so it will read all the belts in the same transport line as the belt being read. It survives going through underground belts but is broken by splitters and side loading onto another belt. So you can see here where obviously there's an input coming in here. It only is starting after the splitter. Um, and the same thing over here. This one is, is measured, but not this one. And here's a side loading one that also doesn't connect to this one. So in this way, you can kind of insert onto the belt without having those insertion belts read, which I think is really clever. Um, the result is not only way more convenient, but it looks better with less visual clutter. Absolutely. Look at this cool sushi belt. This is really crazy cool. Um, I've kind of avoided doing sushi belts because of that, um, because it doesn't, you really can't see what's going on. Uh, but this really makes it a lot better. I think it's very, very cool. Uh, and it's also always, well, not always, but it's very frequently a solution you use for labs because it's fun. And uh, it's not very high throughput. It's in fact, very low throughput, but it actually is, is kind of a cool project to do. So that actually makes me interested in doing a sushi belt uh, because I think it's cool. All right, we have a faster subsequent rocket launches. Uh, this is a cool, cool addition. I like this. For late game, you can craft and prepare rockets pretty fast, but there's always a throughput bottleneck. Um, the beautifully crafted animation is taking a long time. This has always been a thing. In fact, watch this, watch this. So we just launched one and it's got another one ready. It doesn't close the doors. Um, this has been a long time gripe for um, seasoned Factorians because you cannot launch one rocket per minute with one rocket pad. You can only launch, I think it takes like one minute and three seconds or something. It's just over a minute. And people were annoyed by this for a very long time. So you'd always have to have two rocket launchers to get one, one per minute. So uh, they didn't want to increase the animation speed as it might look a bit weird, but they figured out a compromise. The rocket solo can craft and buffer an extra rocket inside. So this is super cool. I like it. After launching, if there's a buffered rocket, the door closing and opening sequence is skipped as we see here again. Um, I like it. It's cool. Very, very cool. And it looks like we are getting rid of some of stuff. Looks like no more RCUs. Oh, that's sad. I kind of liked RCUs. They're kind of cool. So now it looks like we're just getting blue chips. That's it. Man, the rockets are easy. Oh, that's going to speed up the speed run times. That's for sure. Um, okay, so... Let's see. This is, uh, also means that the th throughput of a single rocket silo is more than doubled. It's also super important for Space Age where you send a lot more rockets. Well, that makes sense. 
Pump filters! Oh my god, this is cool. Um, I really like this. This can be annoying if you get some train mixed up and they dump a whole bunch of lubricant into your crude oil inputs. Adding a filter to pumps was technically possible for a long time. They just had to add the GUI. Nice. Uh, and of course, if we have a fluid filter, it makes also sense to make it part of the circuit network control. We're sure that there will be in some ingenious designs that will utilize the new power. Sushi pipes, anyone? You know, I've seen sushi pipes. Um, somebody made a, a YouTube video where, actually there's been a couple of them now that I think about it, um, where um, uh, they use one pipe for heavy oil, light oil, and petroleum. And they just control the inputs somehow. And I don't remember how they did it, but I know it's part of the, um, there's one that was like done in minimum amount of tiles or something, like 10 by 13 is the minimum. And they just did this very long time lapse of them doing this factory. Um, I believe it was part of that as well, but there was another bigger one where they had a whole refinery where it would just like filter the things. But this is super nice. This sounds cool. I wonder if they're going to make filtered train cars. I hope so, because I've had instances where I want to send a, say, you say I have a, um, a station pumping out lubricant and sulfuric acid. And maybe it has a four car set up for sulfuric acid and the four car set up for lubricant. However, I want to have a train that takes both. Maybe the first car is lubricant, the second car is sulfuric acid. I'd love to have it go first to the one station and then to the other to pick up these different things because I don't want to change my whole train stations just for this one train. Um, so that's what I, I would really like to see is, is uh, filtered train cars. So um, maybe I'll, I, it doesn't say anything in here about that. So maybe I have to suggest that. But I mean, if we can filter other cars, why not, why not liquid cars? So the next very long section is about the new logistics networks uh, graphic user interface. And um, the first release has been kind of not great. Uh, as we see um, and I know there's been a lot of like why can't we see this from there and then you have these weird network numbers and figuring out which one is which and of course the biggest one is usually like 782 cells that's usually your main base but otherwise it's quite uh, esoteric so anyway um, there was a search bar which is good but it doesn't really give you a lot of information. It certainly doesn't tell you where it is. So the devs wanted to fix this. And these are the various iterations they went through. I'll let you just go through that on your own. Um, but they ended up with, um, which was this, this. This is the thing they ended up with. Um, so we have the networks on the left and you can choose which one you want to look at and it shows you the items in there and it shows you what's holding those items with the members column like how many chests and how many robo ports how many robots and that kind of thing um, and i think this is a really kind of a, a much better interface that tells you where stuff is um, i'm wondering if you can rename the networks uh, that would be useful i think I'll uh, suggest that. I don't know if that's, I forgot if it's in here. Let's see, the rest of the GUI cleaned up pretty nicely from here. Since we have this big, beautiful map in our face, it only makes sense to have the selection interaction work with the mini map. Another nice small feature we added was the ability to rename logistics networks. Okay, there it is, yay. Um, okay, so that it was a real GUI. It covered the whole screen and the mini map didn't allow any normal map interaction. So the final change was to rework the logistics network. Oh, I thought this was the final. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Um, to be glued onto the remote view panel. This allowed us to keep all the normal GUIs such as the quick bar and inventory visible. So to allow you to build and modify things normally. Okay, so instead of having its own separate function, it's actually become part of the mini map. That's what I'm reading here. That's kind of cool. Why not? That's cool. I like it. Um, so it's kind of, you could see everything going on here. Wow, one heart hot bar with only blueprints on it. How? How does that function? And the quick bar has three icons. Oh no, whose is this? Who plays Factorio this way? How do you function? I don't know. 
With this, we reach the current state of the new logistics GUI. Think, can you think of other improvements we can make to it? Do write uh, on the forums. As always, skip the animations and launch your thoughts to us at the usual places. <laughs> skip the animations. Um, but yeah, tell the devs what you think. Um, I think it's kind of cool. I like it. Um, and I like the other things. Let's take the rocket to the top again. I love this. This is so cool. I mean, I never thought about doing this to a web page, but it's fantastic. But I need to write about the fluid wagons. I'm hoping we get filters on fluid wagons. Um, but yeah, this is cool. Remember about the whole belt reader? That's going to be, that's going to have a lot of functionality, I think, especially with people who like to uh, mess with circuits, especially for people who have never messed with circuits. I want to try. You know, this makes things a lot easier than like counting and minusing and figuring out how many were released and trying to figure out if they've gotten to their destination again and all that kind of thing. So this is this is very cool. This is very cool. And of course, the liquid filter. This is a bit scary. I love my rocket control units. Um, I don't know why they made this change. They made it easier, a lot easier to send a rocket. I mean, rocket control units are blue chips and um, I and modules, I think, speed modules. So, okay. Eh. I guess that's, that's really going to cut down the use of other chips as well. We're going to get to save on reds and greens because those are part of the uh, other things. I don't remember if there's anything else part of rocket control units, but... Yeah, sad times. All right. I like the icon for rocket control units too. It's like a little box that does magic. I was telling that to Matthias the other day. <laughs> I was like, <gasps> we were watching this thing about this guy. He was taking apart a Commodore 64, I think it was, or something. Or no, it, no, it was an 8086. It was like one of the first uh, PCs, DOS. I don't know if DOS was on it, but it looked very DOSy. Um, Anyway, it's a circuit board. And I was telling him, I'm like, you know, because he's an electronics engineer. He knows this stuff. He knows how this works. And I'm like, wow. So effectively, all we're doing is like adding stuff together. So there's like bits and bytes and turning things on and off, all these little tiny switches and things. And somehow that makes magic on a computer screen. Like, it makes light and animations and games. I'm like, how? It's just magic. It's absolute sorcery. I swear. So anyway, I forgot why I got on this topic. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, you can make magic too. And uh, rocket was it rocket control unit? I don't know why I got on this topic. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the story regardless. So, um, but yeah, this is cool. The devs are continually improving the game for us and I'm excited. This is very, very cool. So anyway, let the devs know what you think. Let me know what you think. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, iteration of the FFF uh, review. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. So take care of yourselves and each other and I'll see you next time.